Hello and welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Quark Express. This is a very exciting episode because for the first time we're going to be looking at the new features in Quark Express 2017. Now Quark Express 2017 has been out for a few weeks and many of you have already downloaded it. If you haven't, uh, please do. You can get a three-day trial for free. If you want 30 days, you just need to talk to Quark and they'll get that for you. But there are 16 brand new features in Quark Express 2017 and 16 enhanced features. Today, I just want to very quickly go through uh, five of my favorites of the new ones. We'll look at those in more depth in the next few weeks. And then uh, as the weeks roll by, we'll look at how we combine these things together and with other features which we've already looked at perhaps and other features which we haven't looked at. Again, we're looking at real world applications here. So not just what does this do, not what do you press this button for, but how do I make things work for me? Well, let's go to the screen. Uh, and the, the first thing I want to talk about is an instant newsletter. So you recall at the start of the series, we did a 10 minute, actually eight minute challenge where we laid out a magazine from scratch in eight minutes. And in one further minute, we turned it into an HTML5. Now, with the new feature of column flow, we could actually, I think, do that in five minutes. So uh, here's a document with uh, four columns. Uh, and uh, what I've done is I've tagged the text already. So uh, here I've got my uh, masthead. You can see it's tagged as a style sheet. I've got my title. Uh, I've got my caption. Uh, tagged over there. I've got my first paragraph in large. I've got my uh, body text with a slug done with a conditional style. Now, uh, if I were to uh, create that, uh, let me just copy, copy and paste. I'm going to just paste that into here uh, in a minute. But if I were to paste that in uh, with the uh, document done in Quark Express 2016, the result would be something like this with the title all squished into one column and then everything else uh, ranged in an un unpleasant way. If I wanted to make it nice, I would have to create a series of frames. But now look at this. I'm pasting it in and it's coming in straight away. It's spanning uh, on, uh, if you look at the bottom here, on four columns there. We're using column flow tab here. And I'm using it to span. The title spans four columns. Again, look at that. Uh, the, the caption spans three columns. I'm looking at that. And now look at the first paragraph that spans two columns. And uh, this means that we can do uh, all kinds of design through the style sheet. It's all style sheetable. Um, let's have a look at that. Uh, so we'll go there and we'll look at the style sheet itself. And um, let's just edit that. Uh, so edit. And we're going to go to column flow. It's a new tab at the end there. And you can see that all these features, which are also available in the measurements panel, uh, are style sheetable. So we could actually lay out a whole magazine. Now we can do the same thing in reverse. Let me put some uh, garbage text in there. And, uh, I'm just going to split that uh, into two columns. I can do more columns. Uh, and also you see I'm using the cursor to go up and down. That's a new feature in Quark Express 2017. Um, we can do a vast number of things with this. It is uh, very exciting and it opens uh, all kinds of new doors for uh, creating publications fast and also doing things like having uh, a regular width of columns. You can have several different widths of columns, different gutters uh, in the same uh, layout. Well, that's that particular thing. The second thing I want to talk about uh, is transparency modes. This is hugely exciting. So back to the screen. We now have transparency blend effects in Quark Express. Now we've had, uh, of course, transparency for quite a long time. Uh, and we could uh, decrease the opacity of an image, uh, watch this go, uh, and blend in that way. But the new blend modes are different and they allow the two layers to interact with each other. So let's go back to normal. So this is the normal mode we usually have. 
And you'll see this has been shot against a pure white background using a last light highlight, which is an, just an illuminated photographic background. But even using such a background, it's just optically blown out. And if you want to overlay that onto something else, then you find uh, quite quickly that it's quite a task. And if you wanted to cut this out in Photoshop to make uh, a good mask, you would be there a long time and it would never be quite right. However, using the blend mode, let's go now to uh, multiply. Uh, okay, let's get that. Yep, there we are. So let's go to multiply and we'll see that those colors are now multiplying each other because the dark takes precedence and we have an absolutely perfect overlay. Now, there are other modes we can use as well. Uh, we could go to screen, which projects one onto the other, like two projectors. We could go to overlay. We go to darken, and darken would, in fact, in this case, be just as good as multiply. Now, uh, you've probably known this in other applications for a while, uh, but in Quark Express, in combination with image editing, they are absolutely dynamite. We'll look at those modes uh, in a couple of weeks' time, but for now, know that that is a new feature, and you can use that on text, you can use it on pictures, you can use it on backgrounds, you can even have a picture reacting to its own background. So if you have a picture uh, in the foreground, you can have a gradient in the background, and it will work on that. Now let's look at image editing. In window image editing, it's a new palette. We have uh, effects and adjustments. Uh, and the most obvious immediate use, very big benefit of this, is the ability to directly apply output sharpening uh, to the image we want to work on. So we talked about this in an earlier episode for Quark Express 2016, and then we had to go out to Capture One or Photoshop or something else. Um, now, all we need to do is look at the resolution at the bottom of the screen, divide by 200 and round to the nearest point uh, or nearest pixel. And then we enter that in uh, as the radius in unsharp masking. So I'm going to turn the unsharp masking on. So I'm going to click on that uh, uh, little icon uh, for the eye. And uh, we're now going to see what that looks like. So you're going to see the kind of classic halo of uh, output sharpening. It will look over sharpened on the screen, but uh, when printed uh, as half tone, it will look utterly sharp and uh, like nothing you've ever seen before if you haven't been using output sharpening. No more round trips to Photoshop or Affinity Photo or Capture One, do it all. You've got other effects as well, uh, and we're going to look at those in a few weeks' time. Uh, and as well as those effects, we've also got adjustments, uh, which are more about the, uh, the tone and uh, brightness of the image. Okay, let's look at something else. Um, I've got a, another field of wheat here. I was having a bit of a binge on wheat in the autumn. And um, I want to put some text over it. And right now, I've, I, in my colors, I've got uh, overlay applied to that text. We could change that to normal which would give me white text on the wheat background, but it's still quite confusing. I want something a little bit nicer and which goes well with the layout. So what I've done is I've copied uh, some of the picture and I'm now going to apply uh, a Gaussian blur to it. So I've, I've got that ready. I'm just going to turn it on and off using the, uh, the little eye icon there. The, these effects, you can turn them on and off, you can turn them all off together. But um, I'm going to use 196 uh, pixels of blur. And that is a very, very thirsty effect, especially as this image is uh, 688 dpi. And this is going to cause uh, a bit of a slowdown. But let's look at it. Now, the effect is great. But uh, the way these radiuses work is that every single pixel is looking at all the 196 pixels all around it. So we now have an export uh, function for um, the uh, image where I can uh, change the format, change the color uh, mode, but I can export and link to it so that that file is then saved out and linked back in. It's totally transparent 
and uh, it will no longer be processing. So very powerful. And we're going to look at that uh, shortly. Well, okay, we've looked at uh, column flow. We've looked at transparencies. We've looked at image editing. One more thing uh, before we go today, and that is uh, gradients. Now, we looked at chroming a few weeks ago, but Quark Express 2017 introduces some new gradient features which make this much more powerful. Now, um, in the past, gradients were called color blends. Uh, they're now called gradients, so find them in window gradients. If you look for color blends, they won't be there. And the reason, of course, is so that we don't confuse them with transparency blends. Now, what I always do with these kind of chrome things is just drag out the uh, palette so I can see these narrow bands of color. And you see what we did before, very much the same thing. But now, look at this. Uh, we've got a flare there. How has that been achieved? Well, we've done that using uh, the diamond blend, and uh, not previously available as a multi-blend, uh, the diamond gradient. And that diamond gradient is using uh, an overlay method. We're going to come back to that in a, a few minutes. Um, but also, let's look at um, uh, what else we've got here in terms of the border. Now, if you click on the... Uh, frame part of gradients. That's new. You can now have a, f a gradient on a frame. And we're actually using uh, the new rectangular mode as well. So we've got diamond, we've also got rectangular. And using rectangular enables us to give a, a very credible chromed frame edge, which gives a kind of 3D look. And that's very powerful. But now let's come back to this, this flare. How are we doing that exactly? So if we take that off there, then we'll just see that uh, it, it extends onto the black. And the reason is we're using the lighten mode to do this. But it's not just the flare. I've got something other else there as well. And that is a kind of hotspot. And for the hotspot, I'm using uh, the overlay mode. And that, of course, then only changes uh, the, the, the gradient itself, not the black background. And these two things between them alongside that border give a really hypnotic quality to our chroming and it's a way of bringing some things together uh, very exciting obviously it's an effect you can't overuse it but uh, much much more advanced than it was well that's all we've got time to talk about today uh, we've looked at uh, column flow we've looked at transparencies we looked at image editing very briefly. We've looked at uh, gradients uh, and we've looked at uh, just a little bit of combining them together. Those are just four of the new features in Quark Express 2017. There is much more there and it's getting ever more exciting. Now, uh, don't worry if you didn't get those things. They were just to, to whet your appetite and to give you a uh, just a, a picture of some of the ways we're developing this. Um, but in the next few weeks, we're going to develop some of our learning about these things and put them together and really make the most of it. Um, I've got to say, I really didn't believe that Quark Express 2017 could be as big of an upgrade as Quark Express 2016 was. Quark Express 2016 was massive in terms of the changes it brought. Uh, with a native conversion of vector objects and with HTML5 publishing. But the guys at Quark have really pulled their fingers out and, and this is even huger. Uh, and not just in things like this, which are new features, but also enhancements. And the way that HTML5 publishing now works is much better. And you also have the opportunity to do native iOS applications uh, if you so desire. Well, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. My name is Martin Turner. I'm the author of Desktop Publishing with Quark Express 2017. Yes, the new book is now out. Uh, please do watch the rest of these with us. And in the meantime, I wish you happy quarking.